To start our great fire, we're going to want some slip lock pliers, a hatchet, and some safety goggles. And of course, I'm wearing gloves. We also want some kiln dried lumber. This is the kind of lumber used in construction. In fact, that's where this came from. I went to a construction site this past summer and got a trunk load of it. It's a piece of 2x6, we have some 2x4, some 1x4, and some 1x8s. Um, all of this is excellent. It splits fast and easy, and it lights very quickly. It's been kiln dried. And uh, you can also get it at your lumber yard. I'm going to take one of the 1x's and just start knocking off the edge. You don't have to hit it very hard. Kiln dried splits very easily, especially when it's cut to this length. We've got a knot there, so we're going to turn it around. Knots don't split well. You can see how it made that ridge out in the wood. We'll turn it over and give it one more split so it's a little better size for starting a fire. This one's a little big. I'm going to grab it with the slip locks just to make sure my hands are okay. Cut it in half. Now we'll grab a 2x4. I cut all these pieces to these lengths just to simplify splitting. One hit on the 2x4 and it goes right through it. You don't have to hit it very hard. The 2x4s stand up pretty well as opposed to the 1x, so not often will you need the slip lock pliers. There we go. Just split it. It then broke off down at the knot. We'll turn that. We're going to cut that against the grain, see? We're not cutting it in the same direction. Just a couple of taps and it just goes right through. This is extremely easy to split. We want to do all of this wood. There's a one by. One by fours are my favorites. They, they uh, split up so nice. I'll grab it with the uh, slip lock and just knock it all off. Nice small pieces. Okay, we're done with that. We can put the hatchet down, and now we'll collect the tiniest pieces that we made during this process. I'm afraid I didn't do very well making tiny pieces. Uh, usually I get more on a stack this size. This is enough kindling, premium kindling, to start at least four fires, maybe five, depending on how quick you want to start it. We're going to make some more tiny, tiny pieces out of the already split stuff. Just break it apart into matchstick style wood and put it in a little pile. That's going to be what we're going to light on fire when we get around to starting our fire. I'm going to do another one here. I'm going to use a little bit extra this morning starting this fire just to show you how quickly you can do it and how easily. Now this is plenty to start uh, a fire today. Uh, and we've got our other kindling. Now I store this other kindling in uh, this green bucket back here that's had a hard life. Just pick it up and throw it in there and save it for your next fire. Now you want to stack very carefully in your fireplace or your wood stove. This is a wood stove used for primary heat in the house. You want to put those first two pieces across, not facing you, not with the ends facing you. Your second layer put on top of those. You don't want to get these too close because you want air to circulate. That's what those bottom two pieces are for is to make sure air gets underneath there. The wood that you lay on the bottom of your wood burning stove has a very hard time catching fire because it can't get any air. So we'll build that layer. These are those ultra fine matchstick style pieces that we made. They're going to catch on fire very quickly and burn very hot for a short period of time. They're nice and dry and small, lots of surface area. Now we're going to get our larger pieces of kindling and go across in the other direction. The more of this kind of kindling you use, the faster your fire will crank up. Ultimately it won't be any hotter, but it will crank quicker. And now we'll put one more layer on top of there. Just a couple pieces to give us some good coals after a while. Plenty of air flow around everything. And now for a propane starter. This is a big key, and you want one that starts automatically like this one. See this black button? Depress this button, and it'll start right up. Just open the propane a little, start it up, and then carefully reach in there and light the first layer 
that's facing you, the ends facing you, not the top layer. Heat rises, so we want to light on the bottom towards the center. And the heat will rise and expand out to the other wood. Now this bottle of propane, this uh, bottle of propane, which is just a couple dollars, will light about oh, 40, 45, maybe 50 fires, depending on the, the quality of your starting kindling and how quickly you need to get it started. If your house is very cold and you have a wood stove, and that's your primary heat source like here, sometimes you really want to get your fire going good so you spend a little longer. You can move the flame away so that you can see if the wood is burning. You want to make sure that the wood itself has actually caught fire because it could be just the propane blowing up through the wood making it look like it is. I want to keep this on here a little longer. Now I'm checking it. We've got a good flame. I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit more because today we want to show you how fast you can start a quality fire. When you're done, and that's done, got good flame. I'm going to give it just a little bit more here. Uh, once again, I'm just showing you how fast you can start a fire. We've done less than a minute of this. When you're done, turn your propane off. Now we're ready to put some larger pieces of regular firewood in. Don't be, you don't have to be too careful. I put that one flat piece on top. See, it's only been a few minutes. I put that one on the side so it'll start heating towards combustion. And soon, when it's ready, it'll flame up quickly. Now we'll just close the door with the damper fully open. And we'll come back, and as you can see, everything has caught fire. We have now got a large flame, and we're starting to get those nice red coals on the bottom we like. So let's go ahead and get another piece. Now, we want to put this facing down with the grain down, not the bark side. The bark side won't catch as well. So we'll put this regular big old piece of firewood in here on top of the fire with the grain side facing down where it's been split. And again, we'll close our door. And now, minutes later, we have a raging fire. So I'm going to go ahead and put another piece of wood in here, but it's not really going to fit right now. So the first thing I'm going to want to do, and I've got my welder's gloves on now. They're heat-resistant, protective gloves. Reach in there, knock that fire down, and then put that log off to the side. And that is going to make a heck of a fire. And now you just grab your marshmallows or put your feet up and enjoy. Mm -hmm.